हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू कहानिया कॉलेज लाइफ ब्रिंग अस मेनी इंटरेस्टिंग इवेंट्स सिचुएशंस एंड चैलेंजेस लेट्स सी वन सच इवेंट इन दिस स्टोरी वंस अपॉन अ टाइम इन एंशिएंट चाइना देयर वाज अ स्कॉलर नेम्ड लू हु हैड डन वेल इन अ सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जाम एंड गॉट इनटू गवर्नमेंट सर्विस ही वाज क्वाइट सिंसियर एट हिज वर्क and he has developed a good reputation for himself as an able administrator so one day he receives summons from the imperial ministry so this was no ordinary order he just could not ignore it so he just made arrangements to create his backfill as to how things will be taken care while is away and he packed his bag and went to the capital it was a long journey because the mode of transportation right they were not what we have today so when he reached to the capital he straight away went to the government office and he saw the minister's clerk and he said good morning sir i am here at his excellency's order my name is lu he said yes we have been waiting for you we are we are expecting you so please come as he was going he was very curious to ask he said do you mind answering a question because i have been summoned here but i mean it says nothing about why have i been called here oh kata ho i'll be happy to tell you he said there is an opening for assistant minister's post which has just become vacant recently so there are interviews going on in for that he was like amazed this is a fantastic opportunity so he said i am really thankful and you know glad to get this opportunity my neighbors my uh, you know other colleagues will definitely be envious of me he said the clerk said you know i agree it's a great opportunity indeed but don't you know have too high expectations because there are many more like you who have come for this interview he said this is how it should be but he was excited as well as anxious and when he went to that waiting room he saw a lot of scholars like him who were there in the government service a lot of them whom he knew by designation and when he compared their qualification their marks in civil services exams was much higher than what he had he already felt a little low that perhaps he does not stand it much of a chance but then having gathered his thoughts he was sitting there and waiting for his turn so when his turn came the clerk took him to the minister's office it was a huge spacious room with lot of senior officials working you know in the minister's room and minister sitting in the center of the room and presiding over all the works and he was going through some important documents and when the clerk announced his name the minister just looked up is it you is it really you oh my god lu was completely bewildered he got up from his seat he went up to him and he clasped his hands you know the trouble that i have had looking for you i have been looking for you for months now lu was like what is this happening what is he saying he somehow mustered courage and he said um i'm not sure uh, if you are mistaking me for somebody and the minister replied nonsense <laughs> and he chuckled he looked around the room and he said my team this is the gentleman mr lu i have been looking for for so many months now he had saved my daughter last year while she was drowning and then he looked back to the lu and said do you remember the lake the spring festival 
wherein you just received my daughter and I was so shocked that you know I couldn't even ask you your name or thank you and by the time I realized to get back to you you had already disappeared he said I sincerely apologize but this is the first time I am seeing you minister said no 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 I owe you more than an, more than something that I can ever repay now he was very confused what's going on he reluctantly told the minister your excellency you don't owe me anything this is the first time i am seeing you and i am not that person the minister got really angry this time he said do you think i am stupid you think my memory is gone i am in the senior minister's office handling reporting directly to the emperor and i am not in my senses he looked at his uh, you know senior official who was next to him and he said you were there right that day is he not the same guy he looked at him and he said your majesty your excellency as he walked into the room i realized he was the one and there is not an iota of doubt he is the one who saved your daughter this guy was completely at loss of words as to what is happening he bowed down deeply to him and said this can be a case of you know mistaken identity i am definitely not the one but i am really sorry i don't mean to contradict you so minister said you know i understand that you are a very modest guy you did not even wait that day for you know a thank you also and this your extreme modesty makes you not accept or boast about the tremendous good that you have done and my daughter is more precious to me than anything else but the constant discussion continued to happen so finally the minister said okay let's do one thing we know this happened you know let's accept the past and i promise i will never bring this up again agreed now lu was thinking that like this situation gives him an advantage over every other candidate right any qualification any experience does not matter if he nods it is like he has almost almost got the job right he said he was wondering that okay this can completely change my fate but somehow he could not do that and he again said i am i sincerely apologize i am disappointing you but i am not the rescuer i am so sorry to be contradicting you to all the people here but i am not the rescuer is it said the minister he was very disappointed he was happy he was extremely happy he had a lot of emotions running him in inside him that he could finally find the rescuer of his daughter but he said okay i mean this is like a case of astounding magnitude that such a coincidence happens that you know you your resemblance is absolutely uncanny to that person he said i know sir you have been badly looking for him i can only pray and wish that you find the rescuer soon the minister took a pause and said okay so let's get back to what you had come for let's show me your documents let's talk about your qualification experience and let's go through the interview process so once that happened and after uh, a while when the clerk again uh, took mr lu to the front door of the reception he told him that the ministers will minister will get back to you it was like in today's world 
when the HR says, okay, we will get back to you. It was such a resemblance. And Lou was like, he knew that it is just a formality. He is not going to be called back. And he has lost upon that golden opportunity that he could have capitalized on. So constantly this duel of, you know, saying the truth versus not accepting what the minister really was saying as to the rescuer. This was constantly going on in his head and he proceeded to go back to his hometown. And when he reached hometown, he was surprised to see another summon from the minister. It was addressed to the same name. But this time what? It was referred to as the assistant minister. What does this mean? This only means that he got the job. He got that position. But how? How could that be? He couldn't just believe it. So he went through the document very carefully. He saw the you know the seal of the ministry, the emperor, the minister's signature, and everything that looked absolutely fine. And they asked him to join there with immediate effect. So he made the arrangements, he packed up and went to the capital. He became the assistant minister and he started handling all the work, getting used to the new environment, the new authorities, the new powers that he had got. And very sincerely, he was following his entire routine the way he was doing in his prior post. One day after many months, he came across the same clerk who had, you know, who we first met when he had come there. So after exchanging a few pleasantries, he asked him, did, did his excellency find the rescuer? Ah, yes, said the clerk with distinct expression on his face. And you know what the clerk said? There were eight rescuers that he found that day, eight. <laughs> and he said, interestingly, His Excellency the Minister is so devoted to his work that he is not even married. So he has no kids at all. Therefore, the whole thing, the rescuer thing, was just a gimmick. It was a completely made up thing to test the candidates about their honesty, integrity and how they handle pressure. Now, when those eight, when he found eight rescuers, so those eight people all agreed that, okay, they were the rescuers so that they could just get the job. They thought they would, they have almost got it. But I, Lou was the only one who really resisted all temptation. And he was absolutely honest and true to himself. Now the minister's test was divided into three steps. First step, wherein he made it very, very lucrative that, okay, perhaps you say yes and you can, looks like you can get the job, right? And perhaps we all also come across similar situations in life wherein fate brings us an opportunity where we can take quick credit for somebody else's work, right? Or we use vendor's return policy to our unfair advantage. Because we look for instant gratification, we look for instant gain. Now here we must remember that dishonesty, dishonesty thrives mainly because we tend to see what we have gained and not what we have lost. So majority of us will fail in the first test itself. In the second test, now Emperor became all the more cunning. He started questioning Lu. And he put so much pressure because he was such a senior minister and to defy him and to contradict him and to challenge his mental capabilities 
was an absolute no no and then to make matters worse he had brought another official who just vouched on the same thing that he was the guy right it became extremely difficult now again in our lives if we see a lot of time we might clear the first test but when it comes to the second one we might want to do the right thing but it comes to our mind you know that perhaps we are short of funds or let's say when somebody in our professional capabilities gives us those big gifts which we want to deny but they constantly push it as if it will be considered an insult if we refuse it a lot of folk us you know a lot of folks will fail here in the test at this stage now even when this did not work the uh, the minister tried the third strategy wherein compared to the second one which was quite negative he made it very nice and easy and he praised his modesty extreme modesty and he said okay let's call it a deal and you know agreed upon that we will never bring it up now this seemed as if no harm is there just accept and move on but this is what differentiated lu he did not fall for all of this and he was very clear that no matter how good the reward looks but he will stay true to himself as a result he declined the minister's offer in several different ways but then he finally got rewarded for his honesty integrity modesty and staying true to himself we learn from this story that there is no parallel to honesty compassion and personal integrity in life we should always be a guiding force and are absolutely non negotiable if you like this story don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon